Hello and welcome back. You know, I've been asked a few times in the comments of my previous videos um, what colors I use when I do my paintings. And I thought I would show you today uh, my palette and the colors that I use to answer your questions. Um, I really like this palette. It has a see-through uh, mixing well so I can see my painting through uh, the mixing area. We've got yellow, uh, red, orange, blue, purple. Um, I've kind of used up the green here. Um, this is one of my favorite brushes. Uh, this is a Crayola number no. three, and I really like the bendy handle on this one. Okay, okay, I'm kidding. I'm really going to show you this today. This is my real uh, studio palette, and uh, I'll show you my colors that I use. Yeah, that's a mess. Okay, so this is my real palette. Uh, sorry about the joke. Uh, it is still April. Um, I've had people say that they can't tell what kind of colors I use because uh, when you look at my colors in, in the travel palettes that I've shown before, um, it's, it's tough to see what the colors are because they're all kind of like jewel tones, I guess. They're, they're pretty transparent. I've made a color chart here to show you uh, what I use and I'll kind of explain a little bit about why I choose or I've chosen the colors that I've chosen. Uh, right here I've got Windsor Yellow, which is a staining color, uh, Yellow Ochre, uh, which is more of a granular color, uh, Alizarin Crimson, uh, Windsor Violet, Windsor Blue, Red Shade, Payne's Gray. I kind of use that as my dark. Uh, I don't use a black. Um, so I use a Payne's Gray or use Payne's Gray and sometimes I'll mix a little bit uh, of something into it to give it a little more life. Uh, but that's that's primarily what I use for my, my darkest darks. Um, next we have uh, three greens here and I've introduced greens into my palette since trying to do more uh, plein air type outdoor painting. So I've got kind of three uh, greens that kind of go um, from warm to cool. So I've got a sap green, hooker's green, and viridian. So viridian would be on the cool end of things and sap green would be um, on the warmer end of things and hooker is, hooker's is sort of right in the middle. You can see on this color chart here. Um, after that I have uh, a, my earth tones uh, and what I have here is burnt sienna uh, burnt umber and sepia and I like sepia. It's, sepia is a real nice neutral gray uh, Maybe leaning a little warm, but I, I like to do monochromatic uh, Paintings with that just kind of almost like watercolor uh, drawings, you know single tone uh, drawings and the way over here. I have a little um, a little dollop of ultramarine blue. Uh, I tend to go uh, more into the Windsor blue when I need a good blue, uh, but I've got that there because sometimes I like to do paintings that just use um, burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine blue. And, and that's kind of fun. You just kind of play with the warms and cools and, and not worry about anything else. So that's my palette. Um, I need to clean this up a little bit. And oh, well, before I do that, let me explain something uh, real quick. Um, I was trained to paint um, by a professor um, named John Pollock, and he is a, a master uh, watercolor uh, painter, and he does all his paintings using uh, glazing. And if you don't know what the glazing technique is, um, I'll kind of demonstrate that and show you what it is. But um, I was trained to use primarily uh, Primarily, primarily the primary colors. So your yellow, red, and blue. So I've chosen my primaries to be colors that are staining. Um, in other words, 
uh, once they're on the paper, it's not easy to, to rub them back off to white paper. Um, any washes over the top of those colors um, won't disturb the colors for the most part. And so that's the way I was trained. Um, and what glazing is, is optically mixing your colors on the paper versus mixing it in a palette before putting them down. And let me, let me draw a little diagram here for you and I'll kind of show you the, the, the basics behind that, the principles behind that. Okay, so let's say we have a, a sheet of watercolor paper here and I'm, say we've got a nice chunk of arches or something uh, down here. That's your paper. So you have a, and this is the cool thing about watercolor to me, is that um, unlike most other mediums, um, you're using the white of the surface, the white of the paper, as your lightest lights. And what's happening, let's say this is our light source, it could be the sun or whatever, you know, light bulbs. Um, so you got your paper down here, you've got light coming in, hitting the paper, you know, this direction. And then the viewer, let's say this is somebody's eye here. Getting some nice eyelashes there. Boy, that's a, that's a bad eye. Anyway, so the light rays are coming off the light source. They're hitting the paper and they're going back up to the eye. And what you're, you know, so the white of the paper is very important in watercolor because it's what's reflecting the light through the colors. And that's why uh, transparent watercolor has kind of a luminous um, uh, quality that other mediums uh, generally don't have unless they're uh, thinned down quite a bit. So what glazing is, it's putting down individual layers of paint. And instead of mixing the paint, like let's say I wanted like a muted orange color. Instead of going into my palette and mixing up you know, a muted orange and putting it on the paper, in glazing what you would do is you would take, say you start with yellow and you'd put down a layer of yellow paint. So let's say that's our, our, our layer of yellow. So that goes on the paper and then you let it dry completely. Then you go over that layer, like if, you, if your goal is a kind of muted orange, you come over with a layer of red, right? Because red and yellow make orange. So at this point, you have a layer of yellow on the paper. We have a layer of red on top of the yellow on the paper. And at this point on the paper, I'd have an orange uh, color. So what I'd want to do is come in with a layer of blue. So we've got our red here and we've got blue. So our blue layer goes on top. So now what's going on, instead of light coming through and reflecting through um, one layer of paint and back to the viewer's eye, we have three layers of paint. And what that does is it gives the color that you have on the paper um, a much more luminous quality than say if you, you know, here's your paper and the lights are coming down and you've got just one layer of a muted uh, color there, or, you know, or whatever your color is, if it's just one layer bouncing up to an eye, um, you're not getting all these layers of color. These layers of color kind of work together almost like uh, colored film gels. And it just gives the colors a very brilliant kind of look to them. I'll demonstrate that for you now. Um, so let's say we have, and I hope this doesn't get too long. Um, Let me clean off a little of this palette here. Let's get rid of some of this here. Okay, so we're gonna start with a yellow. Or first of all, let's say, okay, let's say we wanted to do, let's see if we're getting this stuff in frame here. Okay, so let's say, we wanted, you know, a kind of a muted orange. And to typically mix a muted orange, we might, you know, grab uh, a good amount of our yellow here. And these are uh, Windsor and Newton paints, by the way, is what I use. And this palette is a Holbein uh, 
palette. It's, it's a nice quality palette that I got for Father's Day uh, a few years back. Really like it. Very sturdy, kind of a heavy quality to it. Grab a little bit of the alizarin crimson here. So we're adding that in. Maybe a little more yellow. And then we'll grab a little blue there. Okay, so what we've got here, oh man, I'm making a mess over here. So what we have here is kind of that almost earth tone, not mixed well enough, kind of a earth tone, kind of a muted orange. So in glazing, instead of mixing it and putting it down like that, and, and this is, you know, maybe not for um, every little area of a painting, but like maybe the major, um, major color areas of a painting. And I'll show you that on, on some of my paintings towards the end of the video, uh, some areas that I've used glazing. So in glazing, we wouldn't mix on the palette, we'd mix on the paper optically. So we'd start with our yellow. A little bit of a dirty yellow, but it'll be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my yellow maybe there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry that with a hair dryer and come back and put the next color down. Okay, now that I have uh, my swatch of yellow dried, I'll mix up a little of, well, I'm not mixing, I'm just grabbing a little of this alizarin crimson. Okay, so what I'm grabbing, I'm not grabbing what's mixing there, I'm grabbing the pure pigment there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a swatch across here. And what you can see happening is that we have pure yellow here where it's not overlapping and pure alizarin crimson where it's not overlapping. But right here in this intersection, we have kind of a, you know, we've got kind of an orange uh, color happening uh, as the two overlay. And this is, I mean, I, I, I'm sure this is basic stuff to a lot of you, but um, uh, it's just about mixing on the page rather than mixing in the palette and letting uh, the light hit the paper and come back through several, several layers instead of just one layer. Okay, I'm going to dry that and I'll be back to put some blue down. Okay, now that the red is dry, I'm going to uh, put down some of my Windsor Blue. Maybe I'll keep that a little thinner because we're just going for kind of, yeah, it's not going to be that color exactly, but you know, something in that range. So I come in with the blue. I'm not going to dry this one, but you can see what's happening. Um, and, and obviously, if you're, if you're glazing in a painting, you're not going to be leaving these pure colors around the outside. That's just there as an illustration uh, to show um, what colors are going into this intersection here that gives us kind of this muted uh, earth tone orange color in there. Um, a lot of, you know, most of my paintings, um, until more recently, started with just painting the entire sheet in a yellow um, of different intensities and then going in and glazing colors on top of, of that yellow. And what that does, um, when you're using uh, fewer colors um, and you're actually mixing from just a few colors, you end up with um, almost a, a better color harmony going on than if you have you know, 20, 30 colors that you're trying to uh, get into a painting. Um, my uh, approach is uh, to have less colors and hopefully better color harmony um, with the finished painting. Now, real quick here, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this to the side. I hate cleaning my palette. I don't know about any of you guys. I mean, I, 
I don't mind cleaning it, but I hate to like get rid of, <laughs> you know, I got this nice Payne's gray over here and some nice reddish earth tones over here in the corner. And there's, there's so much good paint left in the palette that I hate to clean it all out, but I do from time to time. So I'm gonna put this to the side and show you something here. This is, I used to be an illustrator and this is about 15 years ago or so. I did this book for DC Comics and it's a Batman book uh, called Batman Absolution. Um, and the entire book is done uh, with watercolors. Um, a lot of glazing uh, went into this, to the illustrations of this book. I was doing a lot of glazing of my colors at the time. And um, I, I actually painted this book um, using only probably four or five, maybe six colors at the most uh, because I was glazing, because I was mixing, using uh, mixed colors a lot. So I'll just flip through this. It's a graphic novel called Batman Absolution. And you can just kind of see there's a, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, work that went into this, a lot of watercolors. Um, but yeah, this whole book was painted probably with four or five, maybe six colors. Um, you know, and here, maybe here's an example of something that, you know, there was a lot of glazing that went into some of these background areas here. Like you're seeing kind of a purplish blue, um, but this painting, you know, this section or these sections started with a layer of yellow that was dried um, probably a layer of red and then uh, more and more blue and the the yellow and the red layers underneath um, mute the blue and also give the colors um, um, a, a depth and intensity that that I wouldn't have gotten if I had simply just mixed up a dark blue and, and put it across uh, my my piece a lot of glazing going on in the backgrounds of some of these I'll show you this, the original piece for this one in a minute. Uh, a lot of monochromatic type work in here where um, I'm just basically using like an earth tone and a, and a, uh, a cool dark. Um, Whenever I'm doing faces, and maybe this isn't the best example, but uh, you can see this kind of richness in the shadows there, and that, that's all from glazing, from laying a, you know, a layer of yellow, a layer of red, and then a little blue on top of it. This page in the book, they actually printed upside down. <laughs> it's supposed to be like this, um, and I'll show you the original in a second. But anyway, so this is, this is a book that I painted. Um, I also did um, some Incredible Hulk comics for Marvel Comics at the time. I'm not doing uh, this work anymore. It was uh, very taxing um, on me and on my family. It was, <laughs> it was a lot of work, a lot of uh, late nights working 24-7. Uh, so anyway, that's that, and that is... Um, Again, this was painted using the palette that I showed you, um, mainly a, a yellow, red, blue, uh, burnt sienna, and, and maybe a Prussian blue. I don't, at the time, I may have been mixing um, red and blue and adding in a touch of yellow to get my darks. I don't remember, it's been a while, but. So there's that. Um, I think I'll show you the original paintings now, kind of do a, a show and tell and show you the areas that uh, use the most glazing. Okay, so this is the hallway that leads uh, to my studio at the end, uh, in the middle of my door there. I might show you my studio someday, but right now it's a, it's a huge mess. So, um, hanging in this hall, I have a lot of the originals from the Batman book that I painted. Um, this one is uh, the one that was printed upside down that I was uh, showing you in the book. Um, and this particular painting uses a lot of glazing. Um, 
like this kind of muted uh, bluish tone back here. Um, the fire uh, ball going on here, lots of glazing with yellows and reds and things. Um, lots of glazing down in these orange areas. And uh, these orange areas were uh, produced, uh, you know, these kind of earthy oranges were produced exactly the way I showed you um, in my little uh, demonstration. So there's one. You come down the hall here, there's some others. And I'll just kind of go through each one real quick and show you um, the glazing that, that went into these. Um, everything back in here, all the blues um, were done with glazing. Um, this whole sheet um, would have started um, as a, uh, a field of, of yellow, and then I would layer in my colors on top of that. Um, these areas, um, they probably don't show up on camera so well, or maybe, maybe in print, but there's just a real uh, luminosity to these colors uh, that comes out from the glazing. Here's kind of a fight scene. Um, maybe not so much glazing going on in this one. Um, maybe some of these, uh, definitely some of these values on some of these guys. This one definitely has a lot of glazing in it. Um, all these blue areas um, were glazed in. And glazing does take, uh, that's one of the things about glazing is it takes a lot of time to layer in those colors. Um, so it's not a fast method, that's for sure. And that's why I'm enjoying um, doing plain air paintings and, and things like that so much is it's a, uh, kind of an escape from from the methodical glazing that I've done in the past. I'm trying to uh, learn to be more immediate, uh, but I do still use some glazing uh, in my current paintings. Lots of glazing going on in kind of the fiery areas here. Um, you know, this deep blue um, on the boy. Lots of glazing, lots of glazing in these colors. I think there's two more here I can show you. Yeah, this is one where uh, this background, lots of glazing, um, you know, to get this kind of muted grayish blue uh, tones in there. Um, on this panel, uh, a lot of glazing went, went into, you know, making the whole um, composition very warm. Um, probably left the least amount of yellow under there in the brightest area and then layered my reds and, and other tones on top of that yellow. Okay, so this is the last one in the hall here. And again, maybe, you know, when you're looking at these faces, um, a lot of glazing went into these. Um, a lot of glazing into these shadow areas, you know, yellows and reds and things layered on top of each other. Same with back in here and, you know, some of these areas on Batman. So that's uh, the way I've used glazing in the past. Um, it just kind of gives you kind of a vibrance uh, to the colors that you uh, don't get otherwise. Okay, one last thing here. Um, this is the uh, original painting for the cover um, of the book. Um, and again, uh, lots of glazing going on in these areas. Uh, a lot of glazing in the background. So that's kind of what I was talking about before, where, um, you know, I'm using glazing for larger areas of color um, and some of the skin tones and things, but... Um, you know, I'm not glazing everything. Like when you look at the dress on this character here, um, it's mainly just mixed tones on top of the white paper. I didn't really do much glazing in those areas. Here's a piece. One last thing. I've got all these things going. This is a painting I finished uh, just in the last couple of days. Um, part of a series I'm doing. Um, and, and this is an example of where I probably, you know, I'm kind of diverging from glazing and I'm, I'm using more um, 
you know, I, I am layering color somewhat, but I'm not uh, using the glazing approach to do big areas or, or anything. It's kind of a different approach for me. So anyway, um, thank you uh, so much for uh, staying tuned if you made it through <laughs> the entire video here. Um, I hope that uh, I've been at least somewhat clear and coherent in, in what I'm trying to convey about glazing uh, and the colors that I choose. So thanks a lot. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be back with another video soon. Take care.